So, what is going on, YouTube? Your boy Sam from Team Sarah. Here today, guys, I'm with Dave. And you guys already already seen Dave on the channel before. He topped with Six Samurais. Ah, uh, yes, I thought that was very original with Six Samurais. He also topped with Layer Darkness a couple yes. times. Yeah. And today at YCS, you made day two yeah. with the seven two record. Seven two one. Oh, seven two one record. Yeah. With Layer Darkness. Layer Darkness. And why uh, did, did you decide to play this next, though? Uh, well, since it went really well, that very well at the regional in Montreal. I decided to try and play it again, so I improved uh, on the build and uh, just a card that was added. I added one card from Soul Fusion. It may really changes the consistency of the deck like in your, in your place. Uh, and I thought it was, had a good match against Thunder Dragon. And I was unsure like against Sky Striker, but in the end I added 4-1 against Sky Striker in this tournament. So. Okay, awesome. So without further ado, start with the deck move All right. Yeah. Okay. So I played three Lilith. Uh, really nice one. Yeah, no expansion here. Uh, when you you want to draw this card like all the time. Three Arima. Um, well, I, it's usually Layer of Darkness, but it gives you the, the option. I know also on this card quite a lot. Like if you, it's better than to play like terraforming because if you double up on, let's say, if you have this and Layer, it's like it's a, a full Layer play by treating their monsters. And well, one thing to note is that the um, uh, Sky Striker Ace Ray does not trigger when you tribute uh, a Link monster because you it's a cost. Right, right. So uh, can always out that. And with priori with priority with the list, it's a quick effect. You can like force uh, awkward plays from the Sky Striker players. Um, then play one tour guide, one Sangan, one Skarmy. Uh, it's the ties of the Brethren deck. So uh, the list is a level three Dark Fiend. So when you draw either of these and ties, you get the you get all three. I, I can trade at the end if you want. Like all the value you get just resolving ties of the Brethren. But it gi it gives you consistency to get to this card and gives you some value plays as well. Right. Uh, one Diabolos. Uh, I, I don't want to draw this card. I, I, I prefer to search uh, the Diabolos when needed. Uh, it was very good. I, wouldn't, I still wouldn't play more than one. Uh, but since it gets tutored with every mice, great. Right. Uh, artifacts play one moral attack and two sides. Uh, the moral attack uh, is to keep versatility in game one. Uh, against decks that side would not impact, but it gets more out against decks where it does nothing. Uh, the sides, well, if you've seen the round to feature match, uh, the, the written round to feature match, like I side the guy like three to four times, and I did that multiple times in this tournament, like Burning Abyss, Sky Strikers, like get side like three turns in a row. That's like, crazy. Yeah, because you first you start by revealing three Sanctum with Lilith, and then you after you run out of Sanctum, you start revealing three back to the front and keep going with your sides again. Oh, so you use back to the front to ride back your sight. Yeah. Pretty broken. Nice. And uh, one interaction that came up, like uh, today was, uh, that came up a lot, is um, sanctuming like the, the sight with a ranker and response using Lilith to tribute it since it's a dark with layer of darkness and then making the, the Widow Anchor like not resolve and locking them. Nice. Uh, play two hand travel, play one Ash Blossom, one Effect Veiler. Um, this is not this is not random. It's just that I don't want a lot of hand traps in this deck because this deck feels like really uh, what a control deck should be. Like at the beginning of the game, it's it may get rough. You may get uh, down on cards, but when you get to stabilize the board, then you, uh, your advantage will so bad you would take control of the game. So by playing like and hand traps, are like, I like I like to call them like half cards because you you trade the power of the card for being able to trade that, to use them in your next turn, like. This does not trigger a card usually, it's just like so. And you get these with Sangha. When you, you do ties, you get to one of these. So when you start doing like uh, Lilith plays, like trading Sangha, and then during your phase back to front Sangha, and search another hand trap, you get to have two, uh, diff two different options. Like, two Ash Blossom doesn't do anything, but two, two different ones does. Nice. Uh, spells, we got three Layer of Darkness. Best card? Uh, well, yeah. Uh, it for forces out a lot of awkward, awkward plays, and some players it just they don't realize what's going to happen. Like Sky Striker players, especially activate Layer of Darkness, um, no response. Then you normal it, and with priority you get to tribute their monster because they can't, they, because before they can do anything. So uh, sometimes when people understood that I could do that with priority, I would activate Layer to force cards, even if I did not have it, like to get to get cards being played for nothing. Um, before I played two and a terraforming with Thunder Dragons around, it's had to play three because you because you can't search it. But if you hard draw it, you can tribute the Thunder Dragons and uh, they can protect themselves with their effect. So uh, and the tokens are relevant. Like you can give tokens to Skyshard player and disable their back row for the terrain. Pretty good. Uh, three ties of Brethren. Uh, like best starter card. Yeah. Well, uh, what, what's important? The if there was a ruling that I had to to check to make sure 
Uh, if you tie the red run, uh, let's say Sangan, and your opponent with rankers to steal it, even with three spells, it still resolves. Uh, even if you change the side of the field. So it makes this card really safe. Like, if they really want to respect that card, they have to Wither Anchor like Noble Sun's Karm and Wither Anchor to steal it. Like that, that's never going to be good. So you, uh, if you draw a monster that can be ties, it will always work against Sky Striker. Uh, and oh, la last thing, by playing like I could have played more layers, uh, but like these have kind of a simi similar actions that they generate advantage for me. Uh, so by playing these instead of like adding terraformings or metaverse to get to layer of darkness you get like multiple uh, different lines of play that don't do the same thing so you don't you don't get diminishing returns upstart just consistency uh three part of duality once again uh i know it feels awkward part of duality with uh nice. ties in the deck but i mean if you drew both of them like if you had ties and you can resolve it like go ahead you see the value that it generates at the end is crazy like it doesn't matter if you have to wait a turn on duality and you no, like you don't special summon like every turn in this deck, and getting to it is important. So um, to call by race, this is the uh, 39th and 40th uh, 40th card. Uh, yeah, well, okay, 38th and 39th. Yes. So I, I want a quick play. So it was either this or shared right because I wanted something that could be used like a four side striker matchup and a thunder dragon matchup. So this is more like uh, to protect myself from the um, titan effect. When he discards, can chain. Anything so Titan like since it's like a Paleo, it will not be able to destroy a card. Oh. So I, I want to quick play and uh, against Sky Striker game one is harder because my deck is less optimized for it. I have a, I have to let's say take on moral tag, bring in more effective cards. Um, so I can like steal game by bashing Ray and then pushing with like die balls and, and guys. So. Nice. And this ha also happened where it was clutch to protect my Sanctum from Ash. Uh, speaking of which, three Sanctum. That this this is the best card. Like really? scything, uh, sight every turn. Like in a future match, like the guy couldn't start from an extra deck for like the first four turns. <laughs> so, so basically, he's just like Lilith gets uh, gets sight. Yeah, well, he he had like the the monster like the the he could summon like say 24 and he had the Dragon Matrix, but I just sighted him and when I managed to get to there, I started tributing all of his all of his monsters and eventually I had like four back rows. So. Ridiculous, Ridiculous. So you just, as I said, you just have to stabilize, and then advantage starts to snowball. Uh, three back to the front, like it's the only two uh, two cards that you play three of, because you want to be able to resolve this multiple times in the game. And this either on artifacts, bring back Lilith, to quick effect, uh, bring back Sangan, to with your Lilith, search another hand trap. It's just it's just great all around. Uh, next, the for the two of trap card, I call them my my specialists, because um, like I won't have access to those cards in the deck but I don't want to draw too many of those at the inappropriate time. So by playing two, when the list reveals two and, let's say, the, the next best card, like you usually get what you want. So the two dusters, two dynamiscus, and two impermanence. Okay. Uh, this is to have, like, let's say, a, a certain amount of, uh, of trap cards enough in the deck to resolve the list, like as many times as you want. Number of trap cards in the deck, I think, is perfect. Uh, this more over here in green side, you're having to deal with an onboard threat. And this obviously for Sky Striker. And playing these also gave me the added bonus to have like a certain number of hand traps. And the last card is Trap Trick. The one? Uh, yeah, the, the, one, the one Trap Trick is important is that because they're a steep cost. Like you have a certain number of traps in your deck, and this uh, gets rid of three traps at once one that you banish, one that you set, and this one. Um, but it allows you to like cheat on your Lilith. You can reveal, let's say, if you really want to hit Dynamiscus, you can hit. Two Dynamiscus and Trap Trick, so in the end it's going to be Dynamiscus. Once you've resolved, you got, uh, let's say, Sanctum the first time, you've three Sanctum, second time, two Sanctum and a Trap Trick. Uh, extra side? Uh, let's go Sidek. Okay, Sidek, I Sidek 1, Artifact Lens, one Artifact Moral Attack 2, uh, try and balance and the. Um, to make sure my my artifact engine is appropriate for the matchup. Right. Uh, this is for against uh, evenly match when they enter battlefield. Okay, Sanctum, summon the Lindsay to predict myself in evenly match. Um, I sidek one more Ash um, <coughs> uh, and two ogres. Uh, I want to get to seven hand traps total because uh, uh, it gives you about like six, 60 or such uh, percent uh, for the uh, like the, the, the malicious decks that try to. Uh, to make uh, absurd, absurd combos. So, uh, and why Ogre or Ash? Just I already have one Ash in the main, and I don't. I 
ideally I want I don't I want to have two of the same, so that's why I went with two ofs. I keep the valor and then there's a the twin permanence. Right. So that makes sense. Uh, next there's one one skarm alongside the two fiend griefing. Uh, when I play against, let's say, Burning Abyss or Malicious Dex, when I, where I am going first, this card is just such a blowout. It gives, it gives you a little bit and it takes away uh, from um, resource from the graveyard. And it's a normal trap, so you can tutor it. Broke it. Uh, I, I did that multiple times. Like, I played against two Burning Abyss and I did like Griefing, your Skarms, and my Skarm. Wow, so then at the end, at base, you get Skarm Yeah. Uh, one duster to get the so I have three when I play in Sky Striker to result, to be able to get more often. Uh, this okay is for uh, Thunder Dragon, so three for Burning Apocrypha. It's a normal trap, so I can get it. So if I'm going second, I can get Apocrypha and nuke the, their monsters. Uh, if, if let's say they have a Titan, I'm going to reveal two Apocrypha with it and one Waking the Dragon. So uh, if they want to destroy the bat. To make them think twice about if they really want to destroy, destroy the battle series. If they hit this, I'm going to summon bells and they have like little owls in their deck. Like they have to go to Unicorn, unicorn and at that point I have like all my other traps to deal with Unicorn. And the last two cards are Phantom Knight Wings. Uh, <clears throat> this is against uh, Pure Sky Striker because the best play they can do is using Afterburner on uh, a monster to destroy a lair because there's a face of cards so they don't have like all that much so with this you can force you can protect your monster and then, and, and, and then like it won't destroy the the back room and it's searchable so when you have when you have a, a, cl a clear turn where you can you start with the while, while you treat the let's say the link monster during their end phase like in your turn you get you get your wings to protect your, for your next turn okay. it was great and it's like amazing against the pancreatops that get sided Awesome. Okay. So we want to spin your design, let's go to the action active. Yeah, uh, Torrent Tokens, uh, We Witch, mm -hmm. it's 15 different cards, like you, you don't go all that, all that much. We Witch, uh, try and make with the either Tour Guide Sangan, get Hand Trap and add back to her when she dies, or using with leftover tokens. Um, Nightmare Phoenix, Nightmare Unicorn, deal with threat, Threats. This card, uh, when I draw just Tour Guide and I don't have like a lot of ways to protect myself, I will go into this, like Tour Guide's card into this. So uh, it gives me some amount of disruption. Uh, submarine, uh, engineer, uh, kind of like wings. If I can afford it, I can make it to protect from afterburner. Right. Uh, Darius, if I have to deal with like um, bar load something, because I can do it with tour guide, break sword, obviously. Uh, for the fives, Volcasaurus and Pleiades, uh This is just like if it if it if it so happens, it happened today. Uh, Pleiades I did uh, I did a couple of times. This card is just, is just great. I would, I would play both of them again, Gaia, because I play with Kassaurus. Uh, my uh, targets for King the Dragon is Ultimate Falcon and Bells. Uh, this for Thun Dragons and this for uh, Sky Striker or True Draco. Yeah, like, yeah, they can't beat this, right? Yeah, they have to go into Unicorn because they, they, can't, they can't destroy it. Uh, my other, and they can't uh, ride over because it gains attack. So uh, my other option was like Crystal Wing, but if they have like two cards they can discard, like, it's, good. it's not going to be enough, so I went with this, because this deck really, really wants time, like more than value, it just needs time, and at, at some point, it snowballs. And in the end, uh, I had space, so Cyberline is kind of popular, so I decided to add two Chimera attacks. Oh, free? So, yeah, I mean, it, they, they are free, so. All right, awesome. So, uh, Dave, thank you so much for this deck profile. Congratulations on making day two. 721, right? Yeah. With Layer Darkness. Anything else you want to say before we sign off this video? Uh, well, I think, I think this deck's pretty good. Uh, I mean, I'm just one man trying to, to make it better, but I think if a few players like pick it up, we could, ma could make this great and maybe show up in more in tournaments. Okay, awesome, Dave. Thank you so much. It's Sam from Team Sasha signing out. All right, guys. Peace. I feel like Usain in the cheetah print. Talk fresh game. I don't need a minute. I need a minute. Okay, let's proceed with it. I'm in the house, got the deed with it. These bozos always sneak this and they take a shot, so I'm a keen with it. Like, no, no, this league business. Ooh, yeah.